New details about that infamous Trump Tower meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and a Russian lawyer promising dirt on Hillary Clinton back in June 2016. Before and after that meeting, there were calls between Donald Trump Jr. and a blocked number. Congressional investigators have asked Trump Jr. whether the blocked number belonged to his father, President Trump. Donald Trump Jr. has said he doesn't remember. But we now have some new information. I want to bring in CNN's Pamela Brown and Manu Raju. Pamela, I'll start with you. What are you learning uh, about these calls? Well, Jake, we have learned that Senate investigators have obtained new information showing Donald Trump Jr.'s mysterious phone calls ahead of that 2016 Trump Tower meeting were not with his father. This is according to three sources with knowledge of the matter talking to CNN. These are records provided to the Senate Intelligence Committee that show the calls were between Trump Jr. and two of his business associates. And this is significant, Jake, because this new information appears to contradict Democrats' long-held suspicions that the block number was from then candidate Donald Trump and that that would show if it was true that he did have knowledge of the meeting at Trump Tower. So this information came to light recently, Jake, and it could answer one of those key questions. As I said, over the meeting, uh, Trump's eldest son, Don Jr., had set up to get Russian dirt on the Clinton campaign. Trump Jr.'s phone calls involving block numbers have been this lingering issues as investigators have probed the meeting and whether Trump himself had advanced knowledge through any means of that meeting. Now, we should note, Jake, that Don Jr.'s attorney did not provide a comment for our story. All right, Pamela, let's go to Manu Raju uh, right now. And Manu, re remind us how we got here and why people had these suspicions, Democrats had these suspicions that Don Jr. was talking to his father. Well, it's the timing of the calls that really raised the suspicion, Jake. Just three days before that Trump Tower meeting in 2016 was set up, Donald Trump Jr. had a phone call with Emin Agalarov, who's a Russian pop star who was involved with setting up uh, the meeting. And, and uh, he talked to him on June 6th. He talked to Emin Agalarov. And immediately afterwards, about uh, 23 minutes after that phone call, there was a phone call that Donald Trump Jr. had with an individual with a blocked number. Now, that phone call lasted about four minutes long, and uh, and then afterwards, Trump Jr. once again called Emin Agalarov. Uh, and also, after the Trump Tower meeting occurred on June 9th, just two hours later, Trump Jr. had another phone call with a blocked number. Now, Democrats have said, well, it it's interesting because the fact that the president himself, the then-candidate Trump, had a blocked number, according to Corey Lewandowski's own testimony before the House Intelligence Committee. He said that the, the Trump's primary residence has a block number. So Democrats have raised questions about whether or not it was Donald Trump who spoke with Donald Trump Jr. And Trump Jr., of course, testified that he did not recall the individual whom he spoke with. So that's one reason why they asked about if this was his father. And it turns out it was not, according to the information given to the Senate Intelligence Committee. All right, Manu Raju on Capitol Hill, Pamela Brown at the White House. Thanks so much. Uh, let's talk about what, this with my experts and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has been nice enough to join the panel. Thank you, Thank you so much. What's your reaction to this news? Well, listen, I mean, that, that's good news for, for Don Jr. And, and again, it, it, one of the things that I, I love about the Mueller investigation and I've hated about all the political commentary around it is that Bob Mueller doesn't leak a thing. This is the only reason we got this is because it went to the Capitol Hill, which is leak central. So it's gotten leaked out. Mueller has known this, you've got to believe, for a very long time. This is why people need to just take a breath on all this stuff. Because Bob Mueller knows more than any of us, any of us at this table, anybody on Capitol Hill, and he will act on it when it's appropriate to act on it. And in the meantime, people's reputations get, get damaged. And Don Jr.'s on this one issue has gotten damaged by it, it appears unnecessarily. Um, and so that's why everybody should just let, if you trust Bob Mueller, and I do, then let's let him do his job. And when the conclusion comes, we're all going to be able to evaluate it and evaluate it fairly. And that's what we should do. Simone, I, sus I suspect that you don't think this absolves Donald Trump Jr. Of, of, of wrongdoing around the Trump Tower meeting. I mean, he was in the meeting with the Russians. Like, we can't <laughs> ignore the fact that he did, in fact, take the meeting. And uh, I know from being a staffer on multiple campaigns that you do not take meetings with any foreign government, any foreign entities, any foreign representatives. Um, you alert the FBI, you alert the authorities. So this doesn't absolve Don Jr. of much. But I, I, I do agree with Governor Christie in the respect that we, we, we are all pontificating about the Mueller investigation. We only know what we know, and far too many of us don't really know a lot. And so I am someone that's like, let the investigation play itself out. Because I believe where there's smoke, there is fire, and I think there is fire in this thing, Jake. There's fire in that meeting, and I think it will eventually See, come there's out. there's no pontificating there. <laughs> I'm just saying, I believe there's smoke and there's fire, but let the, let the fire come. But, Robert but, Mueller but, knows where it is. But Robert again, once, this is, there were Democrats had suspicions, and 
Mueller has facts. Well, it's interesting also why Donald Trump Jr.'s lawyer didn't just reveal this information in an earlier date, because that is what has been, you know, a lot of the fire for those Democratic lawmakers who suspect that he did something wrong, uh, why he wouldn't just reveal that who the phone call was to instead of it came out this way. Um, but I do think a lot of the reason people talk so much about the Mueller report, um, a lot there's a lot of criticism that's like media speculation, speculation from lawmakers. I think a lot of it has to do with what the president says about it, because it is something that does loom over the White House at times. Sometimes when the president is in especially irritated mood about it, that's something that staffers know to you know stay out of his way because he's so angry about that and he speculates about it. He talks about it a lot himself. So I think the president's factor in that plays a big role in it. But Ayesha, uh, it is true that Democrats were talking up a lot this blocked number phone call as if this was the smoking gun and like this was proof that President Trump was lying, that he knew such and such and and it appears that that has just disappeared now. Yeah. It's wrong. Yeah, with the, the block number, that was definitely something that people were curious about, and you would be curious about. And people have been curious about, would Don Jr. tell his father about this meeting? Why wouldn't he tell him about this meeting if they thought it was okay or, you know, if they didn't think it would, or maybe they just didn't think it was a big deal. So there have been questions about that. So this being something that they can pull out and say, look, he did not have, these calls were not with his father. That is definitely something that, that the president and others will be able to point to to say, you guys were accusing of, uh, us of something, and that was not true. And by the way, the reason that the lawyer doesn't tell everybody is because if you start there, where do you stop? Uh, you know, true. there's privilege between the lawyer and the client. If you start giving out some stuff, there may be stuff that you have you don't want to give out. And if you start to breach that privilege by leaking stuff out of there, you know, you're better off if, if the lawyer... It, it, no matter what the lawyer is, whether he's confident that his client's okay or if he's concerned that his client isn't, the lawyer's job is to make sure that he keeps those confidences and lets the process play out and defends his client in court, ultimately, if that's where he has to go as best he can. And we've seen that because his legal team did not tell the truth time and time again about what that meeting was about. Because, of course, when they first were confronted by the New York Times that they were going to report about the meeting, they said it was about Russian adoptions. And then uh, then the information came out as it was reported, and then they were confirming it. Right. Do you think there's ever a degree to which um, maybe people uh, on the Donald Trump Jr. side of things want Democrats to overplay their hand, knowing that they have information that is actually exculpatory or at least a lot more innocent? I don't think so. No, it's not like that. Here's what I think they want. They want it to be over. Um, there's nothing positive about this. I mean, this is great news for Donald Jr. today on this one discreet issue, but none of this is good. Yeah. Because all it does is distract from the president's ability to do his job. As you said, it irritates the president to no end. I mean, there is nothing that, and there's lots of stuff that frustrates this president, but there's nothing that frustrates him more than the Mueller investigation. And so I think that what they, I don't think they're trying like to play any maybe. games. No, I, I gotta tell you the truth, this is more because I, when I've seen him talk about Mueller, he absolutely believes that he had nothing to do with any Russians that nobody did. And so he feels like, you know, this is, this is unjust. The Michael Cohen thing runs on a separate track and he believes that's based upon Michael Cohen's wrongdoing and what will happen will happen on that based on the investigation. This really frustrates them. They don't want to play any games with this. They want it over. I guess the only thing I want to say about that is so many people have been indicted about the conversations and their interactions around the Russians with the Russians. And so how at this point can the president feel as though this is an unjust situation? And frankly, in a situation we're only in because he fired James Comey. And so I... Well, no, that's not why we're in this situation. I mean, that's the only he, reason he we have a special counsel. He blames it on Jeff Sessions not recusing himself or not telling the president he was going to recuse That's right. You, what you needed... Listen, what you needed from the beginning was an attorney general who was capable of handling this and if he it was sing, the single biggest thing in the fall of 2016 we were talking about this pre-election and post-election jeff sessions goes and says i'd like to be attorney general and by the way he doesn't front the thing oh by the way i'll have to recuse on russia little important bit of information you might want to tell the guy who you're asking to give you the job and then off to the races we go because then you have a deputy attorney general running the investigation. People aren't as confident as they would be as an attorney general. Then Jim Comey gets fired. Then you get Bob Mueller. But the investigation long preceded Jim Comey getting yes, fired. Yes, but there was, I want to be clear, there was no special counsel. There was no Bob Mueller until, the, like, the facts support that there was no Bob Mueller until the president fired James Comey. But there so was an investigation. This, there was this an investigation uneasiness that he feels is solely because no, he fired but, James Comey. No, Cummings. it's not. There was an investigation. That investigation would have continued no matter what. And I know Rod Rosenstein. I worked with him for four years when he was U.S. Attorney in Maryland. I was in New Jersey. Rod would have followed this investigation to wherever it ended. And you know what the proof of that is? 
He's the guy who picked Bob Mueller. He could have picked anybody, and he picked a killer. Yeah. He picked a trained assassin I to be the special counsel, okay? So Rod Rosenstein is not soft on this at all, I'm and he never saying, was. I think it's Bob Mueller that keeps Donald Trump up at